Hello, and welcome to Luke's Daily Movie Reviews. It's been quite a few days since I did a video, and quite a few days since I saw the movie I'm about to review, so I'm kind of slacking, but I'm finally doing this review today. I don't know if I'm going to make this review very long, since it's long overdue, and I want to get on to other movies, but the movie I'm going to be reviewing today is... The 1995 movie Heat, starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. And those are the top billed cast members. And then the movie also stars Val Kilmer as well. And um, the movie is, I believe... I believe, I'm not positive, that the script may have been written by Michael Mann, the creator of Miami Vice, and I know for sure it was produced and directed by Michael Mann as well. Music by, I believe, what's the name I just read? Elliot Goldenthal? I think that's the name. I always like to say the, some basic crew things, like who directed it, who wrote it, who, who the music was composed by it's a, and he is a really good movie I like it it's two hours and 50 minutes so it's a pretty long movie uh, it's almost three hours long actually and so cast and characters um, the movie stars Al Pacino as Lieutenant Vincent Hannah of the LAPD and Robert De Niro as heist man Neil McCauley and those are the two main characters in the movie then there's also Val Kilmer as one of De Niro's crew his name is in the movie is Chris is Chris Shahirless and other cast members include Diane Venora as Al Pacino's wife, Justine, in the movie. Other notable cast members besides her would be Ashley Judd as Val, Kilmer, Val Kilmer's wife in the movie. And other, act, other actors like William Fickner. In a small but important role in the movie, John Voight. Um, and basically the movie is all about uh, Robert De Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Robert Al Pacino's character is in the part of the LAPD and he is chasing a heist crew led by Neil McCauley, Robert De Niro's character. And so the movie opens with a hit on an armored truck and one of uh, one of a uh, character, one of De Niro's crew who is, is new to the group goes a little off the rails and they get rid of him they try to kill him but he gets away um, so so that's how basically uh, Al Pacino's character gets called in and basically the entire movie is basically a cat and mouse chase between uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro and his crew and it's a really good movie um some pretty funny scenes um with oh also stars um Tom Sizemore another part of the crew Danny Trejo another part of the crew I don't know if I'm think missing any more names I think that may be it uh Amy Brenneman as Robert De Niro's girlfriend in the movie. 
and um, and so the basic. Let's get to characters they right here. Basically, Al Pacino's character is married, right? But at the same time, he's married to his job. He spends most of his time chasing all the bad guys and trying to catch them and stop them from doing bad things. So it, his marriage suffers as a result. And he has a stepdaughter played by Natalie Portman. And, and she has issues in the movie. Specifically with her biological dad, who's just not even around, and he's useless. He says he's going to show up, and he never does. So basically, even though Al Pacino's character is always on the job, basically, he's still even he's still a better father than the other guy. Guy, basically, um, so lots of the movie is. Uh, uh, De Niro's crew has a heist and then they're like you know we're going to sell these things back to the guy we, we stole them from and we're going to give him more money but the other that guy played by William Fickner was like no I'm going to kill them but he fails and he's a really stupid guy in the movie and um that's where I'm going to get to Robert De Niro's line that I'm going to quote in the movie. I can't remember exactly the line, but he's going to be like talking to an empty telephone. And the William Fitcher's character is like, why? He's like, because there is a dead man. I mean, he's, well, I have to start over. I missed, messed up. He's like, because there is a dead man on the other end of this fucking line. And <laughs> really intimidating. And Robert De Niro's character in the movie is very controlled. He's very serious. He's very, you know, like that. The exact opposite of Al Pacino's character. <laughs> Al Pacino's character is crazy. He is intense. He is funny. <laughs> uh... I, in terms of the two characters, I definitely like Al Pacino's character more. He is, he puts in a really good performance in this movie. He, he's really entertaining to watch on the screen. I mean, if you've seen certain scenes in this movie, you know what I'm talking about. There wasn't actually a scene that they deleted where he's like doing cocaine. Oh, like Scarface? But they deleted it. LAPD detective doing cocaine. But they deleted it. But it exp might explain all the erratic and crazy behavior he has in the movie. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. But anyway, the plot of the movie is basically, yeah, unintentionally at their first heist. Robert De Niro's crew intentionally leaves a clue in which and then they can get start to get the heat from the police led by Al Pacino and so that's basically first hour and 30 minutes until Robert De Niro, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro meet. It's pretty much, it's a talking scene, it's a coffee scene, they're having coffee. It's pretty much the only talking scene with them the entire movie until the very end, which is was very minimal at the very end. Um, it's a good scene. And they have a little talk about you know, their lives and stuff. And De Niro talks about, no, Al Pacino talks about his life and De Niro kind of talks about himself and
but it basically ends like this. They basically said, next time they see each other, they won't hesitate to. And probably one of my favorite lines in the movie, besides the other line from Al Pacino, I'll get to that. <laughs> Be like, if it's between you and some poor bastard whose wife you're gonna turn into a widow, brother, you are going down. And there's then we get. I'll talk about my favorite scene in one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. We meet Mo Sislak. We uh, there's Hank Azaria in the movie. Who is, of course, if you know The Simpsons, he is the voice of Mo Sislak in The Simpsons. But he plays a character in this movie, and he's been doing, probably messing around with Ashley Judd's character, who is Chris's wife, played by, Chris played by Val Kilmer. And the guy was like, why did he get mixed up with that bitch? And then, and then you hear it. And then you see the crazy eyes from Al Pacino. And he's like, because you got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up in it. <laughs> I wish I could be louder with that, but people are sleeping in here. He's like, because you got a great ass. <laughs> and you got your head all the way up in it. He cra he's crazy. And there's the scene where he does cocaine in the movie that they took out. But that explains this crazy behavior. And then he goes on to say, When I when I think of asses, a woman's ass, something comes out of me. Al Pacino, man. <laughs> Al Pacino. <laughs> That's probably the scene I remember from the movie the most. Anyway, after Pacino and De Niro meet, we really get into, oh, there's the, oh, before that, there's also the great scene where Pacino, uh, De Niro's crew is depend, to, pretending to look at, you know, planning their next heist. And the police go and look, what are they looking at? And De Niro, no, Pacino figures it out. He's looking around. He's like, huh. Yeah. I'll tell you what they're looking at. They're looking at us. The LAPD Police Department. We just got made. And they're just, and just De Niro's crew is taking pictures and watching from a distance. It's a good scene in the movie. It's like, I think this is, a, he, Pacino was like, this crew is good. They're looking at us. We just got made. And I think this is part of the movie where you, throughout the movie, you, even though they're on opposite sides of the law, you get a sense of some sort of strange respect between the two of them. You know? It's hard to explain. Where... Pacino knows that Macaulay, I mean, Vincent Hanna, knows that Macaulay is very good at what he does. And I think Macaulay sees, probably sees Pacino's character, Vincent Hanna, as the his equal on the opposite side of the law. So he, they're, you know, and... Uh, but after that scene, there is the bank scene, the bank robbery, which quickly escalates to a gun battle on the streets of Los Angeles. This is where we get to the action movie part of it. This is, the scene is intense. There's a lot of shooting, and um, this is where uh, 
a character played by Ted Levine, one of the police. Ted Levine from the Silence of the Lambs. He's playing a cop in this movie. He also he's not typecast as a bad guy, you know. He also plays a cop and monk. But he gets killed in this scene. Um Dennis Haysbert, a character who joined uh Macaulay's crew because he was working at a restaurant where his boss was an asshole, so he's like, fuck this, I'm out of here. And but he he should have just got a different job because he ended up getting killed. He just got shot and in a car and that's it. Uh Dennis Haysbert, uh, who was also in uh twenty four the TV show 24 and also in the TV show The Unit which I never really saw but maybe I will see but you know shooting back and forth between Macaulay's crew and Al Pacino the police and all that Tom Sizemore's character decides to take off and try to run away but he grabs a girl as a hostage but he has no idea that Pacino's character Vincent Hanna has caught up with him and he has his gun on him and just as Tom Sizemore's character turns and sees Pacino's character, that's it. Pacino's character, Hannah, Vincent Hannah, doesn't hesitate with a child as a hostage. He just blows this character away. Uh, um, so Tom Sizemore is out of the movie. He's gone. Dead. And, uh, then we're pretty much left with the last 50 minutes, an hour of the movie, where Pacino's character is trying to figure out where De Niro's crew is before they can escape the city and they'll be lost forever. And... And meanwhile, De Niro's character, Macaulay, has a few loose ends to tie up. He gets revenge on Van Zant, and he's also looking for Wayne Grow or whatever his name was, the person who messed up the heist at the beginning of the movie. So he comes to Dan Van Zant's house, and he asks where, where Wayne Grow is, and Van Zant doesn't know. And he's like, how the hell should I know? And De Niro's like, I, he doesn't even say anything. He's just like, and that's it. So William Fickner's character is gone, dead, and dumb. Uh, Amy Brenneman, uh, his De Niro's girlfriend, discovers who he is, that he's a bank, the bank robber who was on the news, and, but he convinces her to come with him. Uh, and meanwhile, we have a lot of, the rest, uh, hour of the movie is like, there's a lot of good drama with Pacino's wife cheats on him. There are more good scenes where, yeah, more good scenes. He was like, you can borrow my wife if she wants you to. You can lounge around on her sofa in her ex-husband's dead tech postmodernistic bullshit house if you want to but you do not get to watch my fucking television set <laughs> yeah that's another good scene with Al Pacino's character I think Al Pacino steals a lot of the scenes he's in <laughs> in this movie especially since Pacino uh, since De Niro's not there for most of those scenes uh, yeah, so, anyway, and I, I said earlier in the movie, it's hinted that Natalie Portman, his daughter, has issues, and she has a suicide attempt, and they take her to the hospital, and we have a scene between Al Pacino and Diane Venora and they're like he's like I'm not the right guy for you and but then 
he's like, I have to go. And she's like, I know, go get him. And it's left open to an interpretation if they're going to stay together or not. We'll, we'll see. It seems like there's a way it could go either way. Where she maybe came to an understanding and now it's like he has to go and catch the bad guy now. I don't know. So anyway... Robert De Niro's character is trying to escape the city, but he does eventually find Wayne Grow. Going back for him is his biggest mistake in the movie. If he had not gone, gone to that hotel to get that guy and kill him, he would have gotten away. But he could not. He had to go back and get his revenge. By the way, there's this little subplot in the movie where this Wayne Groger I was, was a serial killer and um, Pacino's character was investigating. And neither Pacino or De Niro's character knew anything about what this guy was doing. And But De Niro's character unknowingly takes care of this guy for him, for Pacino's character. So eventually, obviously... Eventually, after the autopsy of wherever, they'll find out that this was the guy, possibly who was the serial killer. And it's like it's a little subplot that could have been explored more, and strangely was not. Uh, a little thing missing from the movie. But you know what? De Niro's character kills him. He basically gets rid of. A serial killer for the police. Uh, but anyway, going back for him to get his revenge is what leads Vincent Hanna, Al Pacino's character, to Macaulay at the end, where they have their chase scene, their running scene, I believe at the airport, and they run across this field, some like by the runway, and Uh, De Niro's character is hiding and Pacino's character has his gun and he's like he's looking around and there's a plane I think a plane passes overhead and there's a light and just in time for him to see a shadow of Robert De Niro I believe and he turns and fires and so now Robert De Niro does not get away at the end and Pacino ends up getting De Niro so De Niro's character is the end one who ends up dying in this movie I'm sure they shot two versions to see what one worked by the end of the movie I don't I would not see I don't know if it would have worked if De Niro got away in the, at the end I also don't think it really would have worked very well if Robert De Niro had killed Al Pacino's character at the end either. I think it ended just the way it should have ended, to be honest. Maybe there could have been a see you next time ending, if we ever see each other again. Round two, maybe. Sequel, I don't know. But it ended, I think, in the best way it could, with Pacino opening fire and... One thing Robert De Niro said to Al Pacino in the earlier in the movie, like an hour thirty minute, hour forty minute, what Mark was like, I'm never going back to prison. And he certainly meant that. And when he walked, Pacino walked towards him at the end, and he told he was like he was just laying there covered in blood because he's been shot, and he's like, I told you I was never going back. And this strange sort of, res still a strange sort of respect between the two characters because even though he's a police officer, Pacino is, and Macaulay is a criminal, Robert De Niro's character is a criminal, Pacino's character still takes his hand and holds his hand as De Niro's character dies. And they... 
and Macaulay dies, and the last shot is Pacino just holding his hand as he just looks out at the runway of the airport. And that's basically how the movie ends. Very interesting dynamic, or just kind of between these characters where it seems like they're on opposite of sides of the law but there seems to be a strange amount there seems to be a strange respect or un respect or understanding between the two of them otherwise they wouldn't have done that with the you know he's like on the ground and he just holds his hand as he dies it's like interesting and so cut to credits like almost two hour and 50 minutes into the movie like two hours 45 minutes almost two hours 50 minutes and it's like it's a pretty long movie it's an almost three hour long movie and I'm, and you thinking did the movie need to be that long and in a way the movie could have ended at two at the two hour mark with the bank robbery but they did not and I really like that because I really like every part of the movie I really like every part of the movie and some really good scenes happen in that last hour and I think the run time is good I think the run time is perfect and so basically that's it I mean oh Val Kilmer's character does escape Val Kilmer's character I believe I think is the only of Macaulay's character who escapes in the movie which is interesting um, yeah Val Kilner's character is the only one who gets out of it like basically unscathed seemingly he the police stop him but he seems to have new papers and new identity and they let him go but he'll probably never get to see his wife again but he escapes very interesting ending for him um so that is basically heat 1995 al pacino and robert de niro and val kilmer so What ratings do I give this movie? I don't I believe out I believe IMDB has it at about an eight out of ten. My rating I mean there's nothing in the movie that I really didn't like. It's a good movie. Um, both the two main characters are good. What, how does it compare to the last movie I reviewed, Scent of a Woman, who was also an Al Pacino movie? I like the, both movies a lot. Both, his character in both movies is really good. Uh, all the two different characters and both movies are really good and but his character in Heat and his character in Scent of a Woman but we're not really talking about Scent of a Woman right now uh, we're talking about Heat and a really well acted performance by Al Pacino he turned in a hell of a performance in this movie. <laughs> I mean, no joke. It was a hell of a thing to watch. Pretty hilarious at times, to be honest. And Robert De Niro's performance was more controlled, more subdued. But I think both of them work very well. The contrast between the two of them, I think, is what they were going for. Anyway, I give this movie 
I'm gonna give this movie one of my there was one thing that wasn't really explored that Wayne Grow character if that's what I can't remember if that's real what was his name something like that there was seems like there was the subplot that they forgot about but you could f see that how they hinted that you know Al Pacino would eventually find out but still it's a, it's a little subplot that they didn't explore quite enough so I'd say I give this movie either a 9 or a 9.5 somewhere between there and then a little nitpick deducts about it'll be a 9.5 for me and um that will be it for this review. So. Oh. Yeah, this concludes this review. Finally, long overdue review today. Watched it days ago. I did not do their screen times. This is too kind of time consuming. I will do it eventually and I will mention it in a further video down the line. But I can't be doing it every time for every movie now, especially if some movies that I don't even feel like it's necessary. But since there was two main stars in this movie, two main characters, at the very least, um, that there is a reason to record their screen times, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, to see who got more in the movie. But... A good, really good movie. But that is going to conclude my review for Heat, 1995, starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. I hope you enjoyed the review, and I will see you next time.